Hello, hello everyone. This is the Indie Ground Podcast. This is the very first episode, and what this is going to be is solely a podcast on indie music. Again, this is the very first one, and to get started, I wanted to do this very first episode to make it special, to make it about a band named Cloud Cult. It's very near and dear to my heart, but I wanted to share it with you all because of the interesting backstory behind the band, one that I don't think I've ever heard of. So Cloud Cult consists of the lead singer, Craig Manoa, and there's other members who we'll get to in a second. Uh, but really, this episode is going to be called Cloud Cult, where the singer's son's sudden death healed him, created a band, and connected fans. So let's just jump right into this. So to begin, the lead singer is named Craig Manoa, who was raised religious. He was always curious about the universe. There was always a piano in his living room. So he was a very creative child. And what's interesting is as he grew up, when he reached college age, he actually had a choice to choose between having a major in environmental science or music composition. At this point, since we're talking about a band, you might be inclined, of course, to lean on, well, he probably focused on music, right? And left the college career behind. But actually, he decided to major in environmental science. Quoting him, he said that to focus on music was actually too selfish. However, he didn't completely leave music behind. The band Cloud Cult was launched in 1995. However, this was mostly just a studio band done by himself. He, Craig loved to write and compose music, but he wasn't very interested in performing. All that writing and composition led up to uh, The Shade Project in 1995. It was self-released. To this date, it's not on Spotify or any major streaming service. A little time later, the band was renamed to what it's known as today, Cloud Cult. And then in 2001, Cloud Cult released their very first album entitled Who Killed Puck? What's interesting also, it was released on a label called Earthology Records, which is actually Craig's own record company and first big release. Who Killed Puck is a concept album. To quote uh, Craig Minow again, it's a collection of songs loosely telling the story of the birth and development of Puck, the manifestation of Minow's alienation from society with his attempts to fit final rejection and then sadly the death of Puck. The album was received very well by a small group of fans, but of course, they were still small. They still had very little growth. They were just making music for the fun of it. But it's what happened next that changed everything and what is the title of today's episode. So in 2002, Craig and Connie, his wife's son, Caden, died of SID, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. He was only two years old. And Craig opened up pretty deeply about that. He said that the doctors didn't really have any explanation of what happened. And this part of the story is not meant to romanticize their problems. It was heart-wrenching for them to lose their son. Hear what Craig had to say in an interview about that period of time. To quote him, he said, Yeah, I really just didn't want to go out into the world at all. We had a little farm out in Hinkley, Minnesota, and all I wanted to do was go down into the basement and play recordings of his son and play music at the same time. And if I did that long enough, I would feel like I was with him again. And that was the only way that I could feel like I was with him again. And so I did that pretty obsessively for a very long time. And there wasn't any intention of creating a project out of it. It was just personal medicine. 
He recorded over 100 songs during that time, over the course of a year. So as you can imagine, that led to an enormous catalog of songs and ideas leading to music. Now, at first, again, this was just therapeutic, you could say. Craig wasn't interested in really releasing this out into the world. But after showing some demos of songs to friends, they actually encouraged him to do so. In three years, they released three major albums. In 2003, the album They Live on the Sun was released. In 2004, the album Aurora Borealis was released. And in 2005, the album Advice from the Happy Hippopotamus was released. Again, many of the songs from those albums have a recording of his son's voice dubbed over music. Now, if you take a normal band's first release especially, many of them are going to maybe be generic love songs, maybe struggles with mental health or depression, and overcoming obstacles, sort of normal things. But many of Cloud Cult's songs, if not all of them, are songs of grief, purpose, and life in general. Now, let me give you some examples. There are song titles like this. Breakfast with My Shadow, The Sparks and Spaces Between Your Cells, Transistor Radio, We Made Up Your Mind For You, and That Man Jumped Out the Window. The main airplay, however, which was played on many local radio stations, underground radio stations, was a song from the last album mentioned in 2005. It was entitled Lucky Today, and it was actually featured on an insurance commercial. The band noticed that they were starting to gain a slow and steady following from fans. Fans connected to their music by that sense of loss, maybe by a sense of purpose, or the deeper lyrics that Craig used. So in 2007, just a few years later, their next album, The Meaning of Eight, was released. Now, even though some time had passed, Craig was still in deep pain over his son's death and what would have been his son's eighth birthday, featured on a song on that album, Your Eighth Birthday. The album, The Meaning of Eight, searched through religion. Examples are songs like Please Remain Calm, A Good God, and Alien Christ. But they now started to add heavy instrumental songs, heavy synth songs, Check out songs Chain Reaction, Chemicals Collide, or Brain Gateway. The Meaning of Eight was described as a less playful, less full of wonder, and more bitterness than the previous albums. But up to that date, that was this first definitive album that Cloud Colt had. Next section that we're going to talk about is Deepening Creative Horizons. In 2008, the album Feel Good Ghost Tea Partying Tor Through Tornadoes was released. Again, there was another huge shift in tone and structure. Even the message was more hopeful. This album celebrating strength and perseverance. It was an extreme opposite in message. Check out the very first track on the album. And just see the message that gets through. There was heavy orchestra that was used, When Water Comes to Life and Journey of the Featherless. Two extremely playful songs like The Tornado Lessons. Gone was the message of extreme pain of sorrow, a more hopeful tone instead. All of this ended up with the Manoas welcoming a new baby in 2009. In 2010, their album Light Chasers was released. This is a second concept album and the first album that Cloud Cold had ever made to make the charts. Notice a review that was given about this album. It says, Cloud Cold crafts a singular linear narrative chronicling the journey of an astronaut from the planning stages of his voyage to his landing at his eventual destination. Along the way, Manoa uses his character's voice for both 
personal exploration on songs like The Strength, Forces of the Unseen, and to capture a sense of adventure. Now, there are no breaks between songs. As the review said, it, it tells an astronaut's narrative, but with songs still laced in about a deeper meaning of life and of purpose. What's awesome is right in the middle of the album, there's even a song dedicated to their new son, Nova, called You Were Born. This song was featured on many TV shows as well. Light Chasers had an enormous sound. There was a booming orchestra. There was more electric rather than maybe acoustic guitar and heavy, even more heavier synth. The last section is going to be called Peace, Finally. For the first time since almost Cloud Cult was created, there was a few years that passed between albums. We have to fast forward this time all the way to 2013 when their next album was released called Love. I'd like to phrase from the inside cover what it's about. So to truly find the love of life, self, God, and the everything, they say we first got to face our inner demons. But have you taken a look inside lately? Less than a year later, a concert film was actually made called Unplugged where they took their entire catalog of songs and made an acoustic set out of it, filming it in the city of Minneapolis. A few years later, 2016 was the year The Seeker, their next album, was released. It also included a corresponding short film by the very same name. Cloud Colt tended to slow down after 2016. Now just more interested in touring and visiting their fans. All of them were starting to have kids, get married, start families. And they had gone through a lot of lineup changes because of that. So Cloud Cult released their next album in 2022 called Metamorphosis. However, despite all of these changes, despite growing up in age, remember Cloud Cult first released their album in 1995. But their message and energy remain the same. They are much more happy and peaceful now, having gone through all their different trials. At the end of every video, I'd like to just release uh, a last segment. First off, thanking everybody here. Like I said, I just want to make this podcast review indie music. It was a very big part of my life. And I'd like to just uh, spend some time just going over Cloud Cold's discography in just three simple ways. I'd like to go over a song I'd like for you to check out if you are interested in hearing more from Cloud Cult. If you even want more than that, uh, an entire album for you to kind of get a sense of what Cloud Cult is about. And then a deep cut, a hidden gem, you could say, of a song to check out. So number one song you have to listen to is off their Tea Party Through Tornadoes album. And it's the very first track. No one said it would be easy. Absolutely amazing instruments just from the second you turn it on. Their message to me encapsulates who Cloud Cold is and what their message is. An album that you should definitely check out if you have the time is the Light Chasers album. Yes, it did come later in their discography, but man, oh man, is that album amazing from the get-go. Just a roller coaster of an album. And a hidden gem of an album is a song, Purpose, that is on the meaning of eight. It is just an unbelievable song. Instrumentally, it's a little simple, but the message and the lyrics behind it is just incredible. Please like and subscribe. Please feel free to share or play this podcast. I'd like to release as many podcasts as I can. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Bye.